In 2011, $298 billion was raised by nonprofit organizations in the United States for humanitarian causes. $22 billion, or nearly 10%, was raised online, mainly through social media. So does social media philanthropy have the power to fund solutions to the world's biggest problems? Joining me now to offer their perspectives are Chelsea Cross, a millennials lifestyle expert and host of the Chelsea Cross radio show here in Los Angeles. Ashley Heron is the executive vice president of digital content at Hyphen, an award-winning web, social media, and mobile technology development agency. And joining us from New York City is Kevin Lee. He's the co-founder of the online philanthropy platform, WeCare.com. We want to welcome all of you to Full Frame. Let me start with you, Ashley. How is social media being used to kind of change the landscape when it comes to philanthropy, would you say? Yes, social media more than ever has allowed a uh, one-to-one -one conversation. It opens up uh, a, a method of communication that previously didn't exist around people who are actually engaged in what's important to that, that cause, that philanthropy. So we have things like uh, status updates or videos or photos. We have social networks. We have platforms now that can actually communicate to constituents that matter to the brand or to the cause. And so it becomes a very a one-to-one -one relationship where it didn't exist before and it's a really exciting time to be a part of that conversation and for people who care about philanthropy and about that cause to engage with that specific organization. Chelsea, they always say ladies first, but I'm actually going to say the best for last because I want to get Kevin involved in the conversation from New York. And Kevin, I want to ask you about fundraising because it's almost like there's been a paradigm shift. We saw it here in the United States with the uh, Barack Obama campaign for presidency. Everybody thought they were, you know, if they were horses, they were putting their money on Hillary Clinton because she had all the big financial backers. And yet Obama was able to raise all this money by getting small donations and kind of building on that. Are we seeing that still out there on the web? Uh, well, there's definitely a transformation going on because it used to be within the nonprofit community that everyone hunted for the whales, and that was getting really big million dollar checks or getting a bequest in the will. Uh, but the power of social media and the power of digital communications has really expanded the opportunity for uh, there to be continuity donations as well as micro donations that occur either within a cause marketing environment or just regular donations where the person actually writes a check or it's tied to their credit card and it's automatically pinged. And I want to talk to you about what you're doing, but I want to get Chelsea involved in this conversation. He's saying back in the good old days they go after the whales. Should they be going after the millennials? Because the concept out there, and I know you're up against this all the time, is you know basically they're just lining up to get tattoos and piercings. <laughs> they don't have any time for this sort of thing. And that's not the case you're saying, correct? You know, I'm really happy to be here kind of debunking those, those myths and those stereotypes. It's the me, me, me generation. We're so tech obsessed and we're so consumed with ourselves. Selfie was the Oxford Dictionary word of the year. However, millennials are really taking social media seriously with advocating advocating a cause or a specific organization, company, program that they believe in. Social media really gives people a voice and social media allows people to interact and connect with things that may not be in their in their backyard. So really the millennial generation, we're so liberal, we're so open-minded, we are so socially connected and we're so we're so dedicated to helping others and we really do use social media as an outlet to do so. I have two kids that are in their 20s, you're in your 20s, um, but you know they're still dealing and grappling with the college loans and yet I'll see my daughter write a check for something that she cares about. So how do you connect with a millennial? And I want to ask you the same question. It's incredible because the average student graduates with $30,000 worth of student loans today. However, 75% 70 of millennials have donated money to a cause and over 60% of millennials have dedicated their time to a cause. So although we are racked with student loans, although we're moving in back with our parents because we can't afford rent, we're still donating money. We're still donating, donating our time and it's because we genuinely care. And Ashley, I want to ask you about connecting because there's a difference between connecting, getting them engaged and clutter. I mean right. we're bombarded with right. messages all the time. Mm -hmm. How do you break through the clutter? Well I think that's where social media becomes really powerful is that you essentially subscribe to the causes that are important to you and become sort of an awareness campaign. It's, it's, a, it's a badge of 
a badge of participation where I get to engage in the cause that is important to me. I get to share those messages. I get to contribute as often and as frequently as I can, whether it's through volunteering or even, you know, you talked about dollar resources available to people. Like, it, it doesn't have to be a large, it doesn't have to be the whale. You know, I think uh, Barack Obama's campaign you mentioned as well was really funded by a $10 or less donations. And so the idea that you can contribute in any capacity on a large scale creates the whale effect. Kevin, I don't want you to get lost in this conversation. How do you, how do you take that connection and, and create action? Tell me a little bit about how your website works. Well, you know, the, the great thing about We Care is uh, the money comes from cause marketing dollars. And what cause marketing dollars are, are they come from advertisers and marketers that want to change uh, consumer behavior and they want to change consumer preference with regards to specific brands or specific uh, retailers, for example. And what each of us do every day from, from a child through a millennial all the way uh, into the grandparents' territory, all of that behavior, all of that awareness is worth money to the marketer. So what we care has done is built technology to harvest that value so that what you do every day can convert into a donation to your nonprofit cause. So that's online shopping, online searching, the viewing of ads, and in some cases social media behavior. Uh, that's all worth something to a brand and they're actually willing to uh, make sure that that value converts into something that goes to the cause you care about. We had Saul Menkoff on our, our broadcast earlier, a young guy, 29 years old, came up with this great plan, Pulse. And, uh, and I wonder if, if young people are looking towards other young people for some of the solutions, or are they looking at the traditional uh, brands, so to speak, the Oxfams, the American Red Cross, that sort of thing. So let me start with you and then I'll get the rest of you to chime in. Of course, uh, every millennial knows what the American Red Cross is. However, if their presence is on social media, if they're engaging in their millennials, in their in their followers, the millennials is going to, the millennials going to be more loyal to that brand. So it's really about the engagement, the involvement, the participation, the collaboration. And for brands who ch who want to engage in their audience, that's where the, they will see millennial interaction and reaction. And Ashley, I'll get to you in just a second, but I want to draw Kevin into this conversation because you work with a lot of different agencies are you finding that the 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 younger people who are very much engaged in social media want to target their money towards these younger more probably interesting ideas at targeting a serious problem or are they more tr going with more of the traditional uh, brands well you know the reality is is that for any particular category of cause whether it's um, clean water or animal rescue, there's going to be a diversity of nonprofits and some of them are going to get social media very well and others are going to be struggling with social media. So naturally, uh, certain people will protect, you know, gravitate towards the brands that they feel sort of get it and understand how to communicate with them via the social media channels. And you know, some of the things you see the, the more um, cutting edge nonprofits do is is take advantage of social media not just for fundraising but for communication for activating uh, volunteerism um, and because the social graph of most individuals millennial or otherwise tends to congregate about people who have the similar interests or have similar ages uh, you find that 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 sort of viral effect is stronger uh, for the brands that are associated with the millennials for example or with a particular cause Ashley, what about uh, these traditional uh, brands? I know you've worked in the music industry where you get married to a certain belief system and then all of a sudden everything's changing. You don't want to change with it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that some of the, uh, these traditional uh, nonprofits don't quite get social media or are still struggling with mm -hmm. it? Or I, I do think that there's a, a challenge. Um, I, I, did, I think it depends on the organization as well, again. But I think there's a, an inherent challenge in saying, like, I know I'm supposed to be in social, but I don't necessarily know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that you know, there are a variety of resources available to these institutions to, to communicate a message or to build an application for donation, um, there are tools available to them. But yes, I think that it, it varies on activation, who is effective with it and who could um, take advantage of some tools in other ways. Well, I want to ask all three of you to just tweet this out, get all your fan base to follow us. Yeah. Uh, thank you all three of you for weighing in. It's been, uh, it's been a great pleasure. Yeah. Kevin, thank you for joining us from New York. It's great having Thanks both of you here me. in the studio. Thank you. When we come back, one unique project proves that the impact of philanthropy can literally be art.